Okay, I'm I'm uh, I'm just doing a quick update on uh, on my boiler which I'm uh, progressing with. Uh, if you saw my last videos, I've shown you how I uh, made uh, my throat plate and my back head out of some lead, and I did this um, just as a practice, really, to make sure I got all my formers correct, correct sizes, and to make sure everything was going to work out with the offsets. Um, correctly and I've shown you that in my last couple of videos uh, so as you can see I've done a I've done a, a template to where the tubes are actu actual go in this in this throat plate uh, Im imagine that template is sitting somewhere at the bottom of this back of this throat plate with a f inner firebox in between it like so so my inner firebox will be there with the back head on and then an outer tube round it and then my barrel will sit in this throat plate one like so and then the offset there's the offset at the top for the throat plate and the offset at the bottom for the back head like so and that's just a representation of where the tubes are going to run through the barrel so They'll be at the top of the inner firebox, but at the bottom of the barrel running through to the front. So, uh, I've shown you how I, how I did that on my last video. Um, I've got all my formers made now, and I'm, I've managed to get away with using one former, as, as I told you in my last video, but and by using a set of offset owls to bring me, uh, me different offsets to correct position and then I use the outside to do the outer flange of this compounded flange uh, so I've shown you how I got all my, um, all my formers made and how I've done it with lead I've now managed to get me pieces of copper marked out and I've I've put the different offsets on each piece for example this is the back head so the the throat plate will have a different offset uh, not as much as the back head um, so I've got them ready for cutting now and I cut my last my last ones on my scroll saw in my woodworking uh, shed I'm going to attempt to use my scroll saw to cut these out now so um, the only other thing I might not have shown you is I've, I've now got my former made to make the uh, single flange for the uh, barrel so that'll be formed around this so it fits into there and then the same one for me inner fire tube at the other end again which which will sit inside it there so I've got my former made now for that so what I'm going to do now then I'm going to go and get this um, attempt at using my scroll saw to cut this out and then uh, I'll do another update of me when I'm ready for actually putting the flange on uh, with the formers. So, okay, then I've been in my woodworking shed and I've been on my scroll saw and I've managed to get both my back head <coughs> and my throat plate cut um, to the different offsets. So I've got my blanks now all cut and ready. Uh, I've got my pegs set on my former. And I've got my, my peg holes drilled in each of my uh, blank flanges uh, for my back head and my throat plate. Uh, so what happens now is they'll they'll go on to my uh, locating pegs and then my throat plate will come onto these lower locating pegs here. Uh, but to start with we'll do back head. Uh, so that'll locate on them pegs, put my backing board on and clamp it to get all together and then I'm ready for forming this inside flange. But first of all, I've got to anneal, anneal the copper. So that'll be my next little job, to anneal the copper. Uh, but I'm about ready for me, my dinner at the moment, so uh, you'll catch me doing that in my next little clip. 
So first thing we've got to do then uh, is anneal this plate and we do that by getting the piece of copper up to a dull reddish colour and then letting it cool either on its own or quench it in a bucket of water. So I'll start that now then. Uh, I'm doing it on my brazing hearth that I made in one of my previous videos as well. Okay, I'm up to dull red now, you probably can't see it very well on video because it's sunshine shining through a window. But I've got that up to so dull red So basically you can either leave it to cool on its own, which will take quite a while, or just give it five minutes or so, and then uh, I'm going to dip it into a bucket of water outside. So that's our annealed piece of copper now and that'll be nice and soft to start uh, forming that inner flange on but you will have to do the annealing process probably three or four times to get that to flange over and so we're going to fit it onto to former now onto them two pins, I'll pick them two holes up like so then I'm going to clamp this on to top. Okay, so just to recap, I've annealed my copper, I've set it on the two pins, the locating pins, to give me my offset, like so, and we'll be forming it this way. I've put me I've clamped my backing board on to the other side to support the the copper from uh, deforming on the flat phase. And what I'm going to do now is just put it in vice and work round uh, the circumference of that hole and form it. And I'm using a soft nylon faced hammer. Uh, and I'm just swiping it across, across the copper towards the former. Right, so I've got it so far round, and uh, what I'm going to do now is take it, take it to pieces and re-anneal it, because it soon starts to work harder, and then it makes it more difficult to, to put that flange on. So, best to anneal it more often than you need to, really. If, if you might as well keep things simple and, uh, and keep it nice and soft. So that's what I'm going to do next. Then, I'm going to anneal the copper again. Have another session to go round the circumference. Probably anneal it again, and then anneal it again, and then I should be far shouldn't be far off having it fully formed over. OK, 
Okay then, I've got me, uh, I've got both my plates done now. I did one off camera. You, you saw me doing the backhead one, which is this one. I've now got that inner flange on, and I've also done the throat plate the same. Uh, so my next, my next job then really is just to continue flanging. But I'm doing the outside lip now, and if you can remember on me. Um, on my, one of my previous videos when I shown you how I had that practice run using the lead um, I made these spacers to, to go on uh, to protect the inner flange which I've already done while I put the outer flange on so what I've got to do now and I've already done it actually my peg holes my locating pegs was in the top to do this inner flange like so I've moved them locating pegs now down to half inch above centre line, which if you remember is where my, um, my stays were positioned, which I'm using as locating points. So it's half inch above centre and six and a half inch centre to centre. So I've moved my pegs on my, on my former down to that position now. Then I put my... Um, if I get it right way, I put me uh, my piece of copper onto that former now, and you can see it's concentric, ready to to do this outside flange. And then what else I'll do? I shall just put this uh, spacer that I shown you in one of my past videos. That goes on on there, and then just to belt and brace that spacer because it's really. It's really thin at the bottom and it's only made of plywood. I'm just putting this backing plate and screwing that on in them four positions for them screws. Putting that on, then I'm ready to form my outer flange. And it's same procedure. Anneal it, do a bit of flanging, anneal it and so on and so on until you've got that flange perfectly formed. So that's what I'll do next then. Okay, just to clarify what I've done, I've moved the locating pegs down to the half inch above the centre mark. That's for my backhead position on my on my former. I've put the former on my copper, so as you can see the outer edge is concentric now. I've put my spacer board in between to protect the inner flange that I've done. And then I've put my metal plate on back of that piece of wood just to strengthen that wood because it's very thin at the bottom. So now it's ready for just clamping it vice like so. And now I can form my, my flange onto outside. Right, so that's my throat plate finished. I've already done my backhead, as you've seen earlier on. So that's them both complete now. Um, the only thing I can say on this part of the project, a little tip really, is 
just make sure you keep your copper well annealed. Don't try to force it if it won't go. You're better off annealing it more than you need to rather than struggling to get it right former. So there my uh, compound flange is done. I've just got to move on now to them uh, single flanged items um, just for closing firebox off and the fire to the fire sorry the barrel so that'll be my next little part of the project.